everybody. Dave Nasty here at Next Level Guitar. How you doing? I was really inspired by this song when I was younger just to learn how to do a lot of these fun double stops. So we'll talk about that and we'll talk about how we can use those. So let's dive right in and let's start with that chorus like I was saying. So hey everybody, how you doing? All right, you know what I'm gonna say and it's so important. That link that you see below in that YouTube text box, I want you to click on that link. If you click on the link that you see below in that text box, you're gonna get some good stuff. You're gonna get a free video lesson that's not available on YouTube. You're gonna get a coinciding ebook. It's got all kinds of great scale diagrams, chord shapes, things of this nature. All the things you need in your everyday. All of this stuff is free, and all you gotta do is just click on the link that you see below. Essentially, I'm gonna be playing my B minor chord, and my G chord, and my D chord, and my A chord. All kind of standard issue, right? We might do some fun things off the B, perhaps we'll things like this where we take maybe a minor seven chord and we extend our pinky out to here and to be comfortable to hammer within these chords is really really important and sometimes a lesson all into itself right just to be comfortable enough to put so much pressure that that first finger can you know really hold down the fourth there to be able to make that happen so to be really comfortable with clamping that finger will be important off of our B chord when we do the G Sometimes I'll strum, you know, I'll leave partial notes just hanging and I'll get into them as I'm strumming. Things like this. It's part of my theory of always trying to do it a little bit different every single time. Uh, by strumming sometimes, I can get a full chord sound or I can arpeggiate and lead me right into that D chord. And off of a D chord, there's tons of great things that we can do. And we've seen these in all kinds of videos, tons of different styles and songs. Uh, a lot of action going down on the high E string. And all of that sounds really cool if we go to the A. So the common note that I like to play off of is this guy, because he's in all the chords. We have him here. those kind of things for embellishments and fun ways to play around. And we're going to take a D chord, but we're not going to play the D chord the regular way. We're going to put our F sharp in the bass. And this is really, really significant because this song is in the key of D major. And in the key of D major, B is my relative minor. And so that's where I'm going to party with my pentatonic. Now in this element of this, it's free reign to execute these double stops. Because pentatonically, it's all gonna apply and then I'm right there to do a B minor chord. A lot of times I'll put my thumb over the top and I know that's kind of a bear for some people. Um, trust me, even if you think your hands can't do it, I believe in you, it will happen. You put your thumb there, you put your third finger there and you... It's totally possible. Um, yes, my thumb sometimes does hit this to mute it out. That's sometimes a question. My third finger will come up a little bit to kind of grace that fifth string and that also helps too. But I think that's a little easier for me and it keeps my mind in that soloing kind of thing. If I go like this, then I've got to jump back like this to solo and for me that's not as fun. So I like to do this to get more of those. So essentially what the rhythm is, and with the right hand, I'm going to turn this way because it's pretty important to, you know, make sure we're across in the right strings. There's so many common notes within these chords. They're very, very similar. So if I have, I'm going to focus mainly from coming down on my fifth string. And then when I drop down, I bring in my thumb. I'm planing all the strings, but you can see how this is muted. And I'm good to go there. So now I'm free to kind of take this lead in and go to my chord. And I like this, because this is like... Get all quiet. Get all out. This pattern
notice what I'm doing, I'll hammer, go back, but then I finish with the one above it. Then I do the double stop for that string. And then. And I will go in with this bass note here with my thumb. So we get this. Kind of motion with our hand. I'll do that one more time. And bring it over that way. If we get it's another example of a couple of double stop licks, I can slide in here. I can hit this one here. And notice how my finger jumps. It's really important with these. A lot of times I think um, execution of double stops will be attempted by barring all the way and just thinking that you can still with your right hand only hit the strings you need. You do need to move that finger because you'll get over ring from other chords and you won't get that sweet sound that you're looking for with those individual uh, intervals. And that doesn't leave out now any of your classic licks that you could feel you could phrase within that spot. I recommend that you pick one or two you're comfortable with and start inserting those. Don't feel like you gotta get all crazy right away because you'll get kind of lost in the timing of it. Start with something simple, maybe one of these double stop examples. Bend. And that way you have this kind of feel that goes on there. If you have any questions about licks or things like that, I think the website is a good place to refer. There's a ton of information, patterns, scale shapes, all of this stuff. Of course, we know we can get all those diagrams and information from the site. So I'm gonna play this out. I hope you find this well, and I will see you there, nextlevelguitar.com. <laughs>